Welcome to Life Effects, the channel where I do stuff with effect. In this episode, I create the bottom half of the main island. Let's get to it. Well, I have a wonderful electronic invention I want you to see. It, it looks something like this. Today I add on to my last node network to create the lower half of the main island. Since I need similar nodes for that process, I can copy the next step from the left side by pressing Alt while dragging the Wangle node. This time I'm using the standard color attribute by addressing at CD, which is the appropriate variable. And I want to only use one channel, the red one. It's a vector, so it needs three values. That doesn't seem right. You might have to use set to pass over the values correctly. But I want it to be a gradient, red in the middle and black on the edges. The parameters I need for that are ptNum for the current point and numPT for the number of points in total. But since the color needs a float and these are integer values, I have to convert them before I can use them in the math operation. Now I can tell the node to take the current point number and divide it by the total number. And it's blue. Because the color is one of the few attributes that gets initialized with the value of 1. So I set the whole CD variable to 0 and immediately we have a different result. Now we can see the red that we wanted, but it's still no gradient. It's more of a chaotic noise. And that's because the points are not sorted. If I set the point numbers to visible, you can see what's going on. The numbers are all over the place. So I create a sort node and set the operation to proximity to point. And immediately you can see the change. The point in the middle is the zero and the numbers increase the further away they are from the center. Now my current command makes the center black and transitions into a clear red. That's because point number 100, which is somewhere in the middle of maybe 100,000, just as an example, would get a red color value of 0.001. So basically black while point 80,000 would have a value of 0.8, which is already a somewhat bright red. If I now want the gradient to be reversed, I just have to write 1 minus my command. But there's another way to do this kind of operation with the given data. And that would be using a point warp. A warp is basically a visual interface which allows you to create VEX coding without writing a single line of code. Now that I'm inside the VOP node, it's actually saying VEX Builder. On the right you have your outputs and here you have all your input values. If I now want to manipulate the points, I can create a node like a turbulent noise and the builder will generate the matching code in the background. In this case, I want to take the position data and feed it into the noise. And I want to combine that with the amount of red color the given point has. To do that, I need to extract the float value from the color attribute. Color is a vector which holds the RGB values red, green and blue. So I use a vector to float node to extract that exact value. Next I take the noise data and multiply it with the extracted float. And in the last step I take the product and feed it into the output as my new color value. But nothing happens. Um, ah, important note, always keep in mind which node has the visibility flag. There can be only one. The noise is being generated on our surface with higher intensity the closer the points are to the center. We can tweak the noise 
until we have something that may fit our need, but we can always come back to this later. I copy the displace node, which was the wrangle node with the vex expression, to shift the points in the y axis. I still want to do something with the y position, but this time we use the color attribute. And since we only address one value of position, we also use only one value of the color vector. This time the displacement should go in the opposite direction, so we multiply by negative 8. The result is not bad, but not quite what I'm looking for. The first problem is that although I want to have a stronger displace in the middle, I also want a bit more at the borders. I could change the vex command, but I can also just paint some extra red color on top of the generated gradient. To see the effect directly, I put the visibility flag on the displays and paint away. The type of noise does not give me the look that I wanted, so I try something else. And it turns out Perlon noise is what I need. Now you can play around with the parameters of the turbulent noise until you have the look for your island. As I did with the top half, I have to make sure that I can fuse both parts together. So I go back to the paint shop and paint the outer points closer to the area where they will connect. I also copied the nodes I needed to move the outer points to the zero plane. So I just rename this group to bottom and also switch the attribute wrangle code to the bottom group. And we see that there's nothing to see. So why is that? The warning says invalid group bottom. I take a guess here that bottom is somehow a reserved name which can't be used in this way. So I just rename this to bot. I also have to change the group for the wrangle and that was it. Since the displace for the bottom half is much stronger, there's a way too big amount that the outer points get corrected. Now it looks in no way realistic, but with the paint shop we can once more refine the result. By subtracting a bit of color, I can shape the mesh and create more details into my island. As I mentioned before, I now have to combine both island parts. I can do that with the so-called merge sop. This looks not that bad, but there's another node which really fuses the meshes together. And it's called fuse. This looks a lot better. Now we can also activate the smooth from last episode. And the mesh is complete. Since I used a color noise on the bottom part, I can now add a color node to add an overall tone. It doesn't matter that much for the final result once we come to the point to create materials. But it's convenient for now. Let's make that a bit brighter so we can see the finer details of the mesh. And there you have it. The base model of my floating island is finished. 
It will be the center point for most future steps, like the hanging vines, the compound wall, the drilled circle and of course the generated grass. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to comment down below. And that was it for this episode. Next time I'm gonna create the Druid Circle by using the new Houdini 16 Boolean tools. I hope you found something useful and are back next time.